Swedish. We've got Ember versus Petra, and opening up here with the guitars. Let's see what Java's able to do. And one thing I do like about Java's playstyle, as opposed to anybody else that I watched while playing Brawlhalla, is that the legend that he decides to commit to for the tournament, I guarantee you he's got something that is specific to that legend that he's going to be bringing out. And what I've been seeing you know, earlier today, both in pools and on the side stream, is that down signature on the bow, getting those spikes for players that like to hold on to the side of the stage. And we'll see if Java's able to get that against Radish here in this best of five. Well, we saw Java actually get that side light there, and then no fall. Well, could have gotten a D-Light true, but tries to go for a mix-up there. Maybe read a spot dodge and get a little bit of extra damage. But despite that, is getting a good string of blows here as Radish pretty much leaving him unanswered. Another recovery finally fights his way out the corner. Yeah, great job with that landing. Radish falls to the stage, gets the side light into side air. Java, however, pushes Radish off the side of the stage, and the neutral comes out instead of the down sig, which is what I was expecting there. But the Nair sends Radish flying, gets a disarm from that orb, and Radish picking up the gauntlets has an opportunity for an edge guard here with that side sig goes punished and java looking for the down air the side air anything no radish get fights his way back gets the recovery and could potentially take the first stock away from what was a huge lead for java in game one okay and java looking for that delight recovery but radish jumping over it gets sent off stage yet again with a sayer and what he just ran off stage Fastballed low and recoveried into him, and it's like, I know you're not going to do anything. You're not even going to press the dodge button. You're going to think I'm faking something, so I'm actually oh, going to let it rip. Dare side air. Weapon throw does not hit. Radish barely avoids getting what could have been a zero to knock up there, and Java continues with a fresh pair of guitars. Neutral in an air. Second air. Weapon throw oh. from there. A Java special. Something that he innovated on the hammer and has taken to every single weapon that he's played since. He loves getting those weapon throws and to pick up immediate attacks, just like we saw kind of with earlier, but now here in this game one, Radish evens it up two to two. Okay, now what is the answer going to be here from Radish? Needs to bring this game back as Java is looking pretty poised here to go ahead and secure game one. Has so much damage racked up. The neutral signature from Daryl not quite being enough, but this recovery will surely be that. Oh, and just barely. I think any lower, and Radish was at that perfect knockback angle to where he would have been able to come back to the stage, but Java takes a huge lead, and the guitars continue attacking on more damage. That down light goes quick. Nice oh. time, and then chased on to reverse there, and Radish Radish with the ground pound gets Java at yellow as what was looking like was going to be an amazing Java combo gets interrupted as he lets that recovery rip a little too soon. Yeah, I think it was one of those moments where, you know, depending on where you get hit by that guitar neutral air. <gasps> oh, he got oh, the he traded with the recovery, it's fine. He makes it back to the stage, but... Oh, the stuff recovery is what made me think that Radish was going to take that and send it flying, using the hovering mechanic of that. Because he didn't gravity cancel, he got the full charge while going for that down signature. His job attacks, attacks on a ton of damage and keeps the game even. Okay, just like that. These two are back scrapping again, and Radish is on that orb, which he's so good with. Can Java retaliate, trying to find an option? That neutral signature is going to be an answer. We've seen a lot of jumping coming out from Radish. There goes Java again, saying, I'm not afraid to let it rip. He's trying to bait him to keep him grounded so we can go for a D-Light recovery. Radish with that side light. Trying to get the landing from Java, but Java goes to the other side. The neutral signature would definitely knock out here. Radish trying to avoid this attack. Sidelight comes through, and Java trying to bully him to the side of the stage. Gets the recovery. Oh. A little too low towards the stage. Get that knockout, but the second one will definitely knock out. No matter where he gets it, and Radish without a weapon, fighting his way back to stage. That downlight dodge, the sideline slider connects, and Java, bow, knocked out of his hands. Means an orb ground pound could do it. Java, however, with the nair, gets back to the stage and just throws the bow away. And that recovery will seal the deal for game number one. As Java with a nice head nod goes, all right. You got me with that knockout on the orb on the left side of the stage, but the momentum is still mine. And that's true, Flambo, because looking at the damage towards the end there, oh, man. really solidly in favor of Java from that game one. And it's kind of stressful on the side of, of Java, I think, in terms of, yeah, completely lapped them in damage. And how close was that game? It, extremely so, I'd say, in terms of just like the way it looked toward the end, right? We're both in the deep red here. This is a close game, but then you got to remember that, like, it's Ember defense. Yeah, yeah, and you take that replay back to stock if you wanted to, and you would see that orb getting the stuff recovery packs while Java was at yellow and just losing that stock there. And that was the huge swing because up until that point, Java was getting maybe 20 more damage for engagement with the guitars. He kept getting Raiders off the side of the stage and doing a chase dodge One, pivot down wow. air that led to even more damage with the guitars. So we're going back to Apocalypse and seeing how Raiders is going to be able to adapt to the guitar play from Java because so far he's looking very strong in this best of five. And going right back into it, we can see Java on this bow trying to get those extended punishes, but Radish on the orb is so good at playing the neutral game grounded, right? He's so good at picking up those side lights, and then once you start approaching on the ground, like he ran all the way to the other side of the stage there. He knew that D-Light was coming. 
Oh man, and Java now on the side of the stage. So much damage coming through. Ooh, big hits. Try to send him flying. Bow with very damage in his hands. Another hit could send him being unarmed. Will he switch over to it? He's gonna pull onto this one. Falling there. He has a chance to switch, but Rage with that side air gets oh. it down there. Java recovery that sent early on. Down to dodge out of the way. Picks up the bow on the way back and gets an air for it. Java somehow turning that disadvantaged state into an advantage state as he gets more damage on the Radish and could be close to taking the stock there. Finally, the bow gets sent out of his hands. And it's plays like that that get Java this far. Like, there's there's no one else doing wacky recoveries like that and getting away with it as often as he does, but he manages to take these very precarious situations and flip the script on his opponent and secure a lead for himself in that manner. Weapon throw forward, does hit Radish. Pickup gets the Nair. Radish dodges one neutral light with the weapon throw into pickup. Means he has an edge guard here. Does he go for the down? No, he just waits without the a sweat beads. And look at that. Weapon throw forward into the weapon spawn. Means Java. Perfect denial. No, I cannot believe he has survived that unarmed recovery. That Orb Sarah definitely will not be coming back from that as Radish takes the first strike in game two. And the toughest thing, I think, is trying to maintain a lead against a character like Ember here, right? You got the stock, you want to get a little bit of extra damage before. No. Four went out for Rage. Java there, yeah. dude. Pivots the recovery with no jumps left, and Ray just looking at that and being like, okay, if you want to give it to me, I'll take it. He is up 3-2-1 here in game number two, and it's looking like it's going to be a game for Radish on the board after this. But let's see. Java, if he can get this knockout without taking any damage, we've seen how well he can do with the guitars with one good dodge read. Radish could still be at risk of losing this game, but so far, Radish so good with the orb. Oh, man, and Java has to do something here to go ahead and bring this game back. That neutral is going to be the first step in a very long recovery process here, as I don't know if there's any amount of physical therapy that can bring him back into this game, but we're going to see. Yeah, Java gets one neutral to light. No nair afterwards, though, and Radish goes right back to center stage. Has the gauntlets in hand. He gets that side air, side light recovery. That is basically going oh to deal the same. Oh, oh, oh Radish! Three recoveries into an uppercut with the gravity castle neutral stick. And in a low damage game, Radish explosively comes back from what was a pretty solid loss in game number one in favor of Java. I'm sitting here talking about, oh man, can you do any PT to bring himself back? And then like Ray just hops over there and just snaps his ankles in half. Like, nah, bro, it's good. I think you can just sit in the recovery bed a little bit longer. And Java, we're going to see in this replay here, look at the beautiful way that this set ends, or this game ends. Side light recovery, and I think the recovery just catch uh, each landing. Uh, he goes back to the stage, uh, by the way. So that the big thing in that replay was that in order to make that happen, he fast falls to the platform in the midst of the combo so that he could have the jumps necessary to get high enough for that three, to connect two, and catch Java one, off guard. Uh, Java, despite having a spear, which we've talked so much about on the analyst desk, is going to be holding on to the Amber, which he's been battling with into this top eight, going into game number three. Uh, maybe he switches over to the Tori if it goes really poorly, but I think that Java, with his experience, is looking at that game and going like, okay, Raiders, you got me. I had that self-destruct on the left side of the stage. Let's go back to game number three, and I'll show you what I made of it. Okay, and will it be enough? I, Java, like, I, it's always so sad to see something like that happen yeah. in a, you know, like a top eight situation. But despite that, I've seen it happen to players of Java's caliber, and they've been able to bring it back. I mean, check out this play. He said, go to sleep, boy. Oh, oh the, how did that hit? The very tip back end hit of the orb recovery managed to clip Java's toe as he went for the unarmed down air. Yeah, the orb literally orbiting Radish there as he comes back to the stage and Java looking for that dive kick just times it wrong, gets hit by on the way back and the ground pound released just like frames away from connecting with Radish and taking that first stock with the neutral sig will do it as he gets sent flying to the top right and Java takes the lead in game three. Okay, now can Java maintain the lead here as Radish is looking for that weapon spawn? Is Java going to starve him? The answer is yes. It switches right back to those Katars. Tries to get a bit of extra damage Whoa. here. And actually, that, that was a beautiful extension. He, he did it after a whole he started sweating, too. Yeah, the yeah. gravity castle down like came, but it looked like he had nothing left. And he just tacks on more and more damage here. And this is a lot more like the Java we were seeing in game number one. Coming out in game three, side like it. Just tries to go for that pivot there. Does not connect with the stair back to the stage. And that Java continues running away with this lead. Okay, and Java looking so good on these guitars right now. Almost gets clipped by that neutral stick. We've seen Radish hit people with that all day, including Java even earlier in this very same set. You know, no I, more. I, I love that we finally got to see that because that was like a Radish classic that has been like ironed out as he has just gotten more consistently into top threes in North America. But the gravity cancel neutral stick off the side of the stage is something that he loves to let rip, and Java wasn't able to punish it. And we could see it here again. He's waiting out for those exclamation points. Here it comes. He's got to get back to the stage, and the science that goes through, and Radish jumps 
up above it, avoids the threatening hitbox there, but Java, one new position from the bow, could take Raiders down, because he's just trying to do it unarmed. He tries, he gets the nair, bow picked up, will the neutral sig rip, and see, downline recovery doesn't need it, he gets that stock off the top, and he is one stock away from bringing it to match point. Yeah, clean one stock, by the way, like taking no damage whatsoever, has such a healthy lead here, should be able to make up for some Pretty hefty damage from the last game. Uh -oh. We'll see. Don't let this happen to you twice. Don't let <laughs> it be you. Last time we saw this situation, he literally got hit by an orb ground pound and was gone with guitars at yellow. That time he gets through the down stick and a ton of damage comes out for Java as he gets the backs into that nair. Lands back on the center stage and starts oh. nair juggling Raiders into the sky. Goes oh. to gravity cancel down light and he just continues hitting him up with the guitars. There's the sideline side air Radish trying to break some of that pressure, but damage is even while stocks are double to Java's favor. Okay, and just like that, Java saying, I I think I want to take this game because the last one was swagged away from me. But despite that, Radish does have these gauntlets, tries to go for the ground oh. pound, and Java says, bro, come on, man. <laughs> That's come exactly on. what he thought. He sees that ground pound coming through, and he's like, you really expect me to jump through this? He dodges up, immediately buffers that ground pound, gets a punish of his own, and gets a two-stock in game number three, bringing it to match point. And if he wins this next game, Radish will be out at seventh, and Java will be moving on here in BCX 2022. And you gotta remember, this is a match that is worth several thousands of dollars, right? This isn't, oh, uh, you know, if I win this, I lose like a couple hundred bucks even. Three, it, no, two, it is thousands. One. So you want to make sure you're going as far as you possibly can, but that dream could be shattered here for Radish if Java plays this game the way he played the last one. Yeah, games one and three have been fantastic. It's the first time that we've seen the bike come out here with the size. The dudes come through as well, and Java's like, okay, I'm only hitting you with signatures this game. He goes for that dodge through. Radish goes at the ground pound, and that time Java not ready to punish, but Radish keeps going, has to recover to the other side of the stage. Is it time? No. Ground pound comes through. I thought he was going to let the down to come out there. But Radish gets back to the stage, gets the pummel, and Java, despite all the pressure, is only barely ahead in damage here. One of the most terrifying things, I think, for Radish here is that you have gauntlets. You want to go off stage. You want to get those early KOs by yeeting your opponent into the bottom KO box. But Java is one of the best players in the world at playing off stage. Remember it from the Bovar Hammer, and it's not like that doesn't translate to other weapons. That's right. And there, off stage, over the stage, he gets that recovery in less than a minute. And Radish is down to two stocks here. Winner of this looking to move on in the bracket to fight against Luna, who was upset by Impala. But they got to get through each other first. That ground pound real quick gets the dash jump pivot and stops Java from dancing on the edge any longer than he should be. Finally manages to land one up, and that's the thing, right? We kind of jested a little bit about the way that last game ended, but when you're playing Gauntlet, sometimes you just have to go for it because you will catch your opponent sleeping, especially if you do a dash jump over the corner of the lip of the stage like that. It works so often. Yeah, Java there waiting for Rage to go for something and Rage saying like, I'm gonna calmly wait out those exclamation points to come out because I know that you can't hold on to the wall forever. Side air coming out from the bow, no sideline afterwards and Radish holding on the edge of the stage, puts up the orb there, trying to box, Ra uh, bo box Java out and Java gets that recovery. And now Radish in orange, that D-Light -like came so close to connecting the nares, they're still hitting, he jumps over one there, but the neutral hits, one more of those will take him down. Can Java get the edge guard with the snare here? He has Radish, oh. there's that first of the many down six that I'm expecting to see from a weapon throw, pick up Nair, Radish, one, strong hit away from going down. That neutral sink will just barely not take him down. Yeah, it goes from coast to coast, and that's exactly what he needed there, because otherwise it would have been simply a one-way trip into the KO box. But that means Radish has a chance here to tack on some extra damage, even potentially bring this back. That's two side light sayers he's found now because that conversion did not KO. And maybe, just maybe, he might be able to get more. Yeah, despite Three? Radish being so behind in damage, it feels like he is completely ahead with the momentum. The down light finally breaks the pressure that Radish was applying from center stage, gets the recovery, and here, if Java can get those guitars, we can really see him run away with it, but I think he accidentally throws that weapon away. Oh. No, he's like, I'm ready to go unarmed. Okay, and that's gonna be a toss off stage, a weapon throw to close out that stock. And that actually, I feel like, was a little bit of an early loss of that stock yeah. for Java. I think got a little bit overzealous going off stage unarmed and yeah. then paying the price for it. Yeah, Radish got a really nice weapon spawn there. Java oh, with the Qatar avoids the down stick the Third second time, time but uh, this is a science to come through as a mix up. D Light recovery, Radish waiting for that landing. He's been so good with the sideline siders. Just a Sarah there that time. Second Sarah. Really playing well with the orb here, and Java, after losing that stock, has yet to get anything started. Sidelight Sider disarms him from the guitars, oh. and now barely dodges out of the way. Another Sidelight Sair, and one more of those, and Java will be going to game five. That was the slickest movement 
that I have ever seen. And that's why that down sig on the gauntlets is just, and on the orb especially, right? The, the, the giant rocket fist, right? It's yep. so terrifying. You don't want to get hit by it. You can see that he does this dash forward toward the lip of the stage to threaten that he's going to go for that. And then he just slides right back onto the stage, jumps backwards inside airs because he's like, yep, I got you. Yeah, and that was after, I mean, we saw repeat down six into the sides. It gets the down line to make him afraid of recovering high. And like you said, those fadeaway stairs came out so handedly. And then once Java was finally touching the ground, the side light is just the only thing that came before it. And after a while, the side airs were just too strong to deal with. And now we're in game number five where Java is seriously considering, okay, do I think I can do it with the Daryl, with that epic crossover for Ember? Or are we going to see a return? Maybe another legend, maybe a spear legend, the Hattori. I think the Hattori would be a good pick. Now granted, on the side of Radish here, this is not the first time today right. that he's gone to game five, nope. right? And the first time, didn't go so great, <laughs> you know? But he's been able to fight his way back, claw from the gates of the underworld to go ahead and make it this far in a bracket. But once again, the loser of this match, this game five is done. That is it. Their tournament run is over. They get a pretty fat check as a conciliation prize. But despite that, that's where the road ends. That's where the road ends, and the winner of this continues on the road to fight against PR number one in North America, Luna, upset by Impala earlier on in the day. So they have a quite a tough road ahead of them, but they gotta get past each other first. And who's it gonna be, Java or Radish here in game number five, where Java's locking in Daryl, staying with Ember the entire way through, and Apocalypse is going to be the stage for game number five between these two players here at BCX 2022. Okay, Daryl, Garnet. Human man versus Three, crystal two, gem, one, right? One. This is what bro hall is all about, baby We're going ahead and starting this one off on apocalypse And we have radish already coming out the gate swinging with this garnet gets a side light side air pushing job into the corner They both understand how much this game means for their bracket run their PR their everything and they're gonna come out guns blaze Radish starts off so strong with the orb. I feel like whenever Radish gets that orb on that first weapon against center stage, it's so hard for his opponents to be able to get anything started because he's just so great at finding the neutral lights, oh. the down lights, the recoveries. He goes for the fourth after Jabba is already from white to orange at the beginning of the game and begins to stop the pressure there. Oh. Goes up for the neutral stage and he gets sighted and I thought Radish was ready to combo it, but he chased Dodgers back to the stage instead and opts to go for the edge guard with the dares. At this point, I don't know if side light side air will KO from the middle, but it will from the side of the stage. And now that extra bit of damage from the side is gonna set him up, almost catches Java with the down signature, but still has him in the corner. Radish in an excellent spot to close this one out. You can get one more blow, and it's gonna be a fade back side air. Still not enough juice, and he doesn't put the down sig in the right spot. Yeah, the down sig just too close to the stage, ends up connecting with the ground. Java was able to get one on arm there before the first strike inevitably goes over to Radish. Radish barely damaged here at the beginning of game number five, and Java's struggling to get anything started. The bow looked okay, but it's Radish's orb that looks fully warmed up here in this game. Game five and Flambo, you were saying Radish, plenty of game five sets today, and most of the time he comes out on top. The only player being able to stop him so far being Kaida. Oh man, you can see it's becoming a pretty neutral heavy game now. They're scared to throw at attacks because they don't want to get whiff punished. They want to make sure that if they're pressing that light attack button or that signature button that is going to connect with the opponent like it did there for Java perfectly lining up that neutral signature. Yeah, it doesn't leave the knockout though, and Java dodged directly upwards, hoping that Radish would spot dodge to get the punish. But Radish makes it back to the stage, and these bow side airs are gonna need a lot more. Oh. There's that side, it's a great coverage of Java, despite such a great start from Radish. Did not take as much damage as I expected him to, and he's keeping this game five really, really close. Yeah, managing to secure that stock with the Akira slide, and now Java sitting here saying, okay, just gotta find my opening. I'm on guitars, it means I have the ability to whiff like nares like that. You can just kind of throw those nares out because they're so hard to punish. You can drift so far when you're doing it that if you don't know whether or not you're gonna hit your opponent, it's a very nice move to have your arsenal. Oh, and the cider hits. Radish putting on those ground pounds. Cider connects, these fade back stairs are so great. He gets this recovery, second recovery comes through. Java gets the no neutral air, but no jump. Nothing to be able to follow up. Can't go for an early knockout there. And Radish side six, down six, everything threatening Java's way back to the stage. And Java opts to go for the, work, the guitars there. Spot dodges once, dash, spot dodge. Gets oh. past one dare, but can't get past the fade away side air as Radish is looking to take this next stock from Java pretty quickly. One guitar recovery comes through, but Java is gonna need more than just one hit here and there to be able to deal with Radish. 
Java hasn't been able to get a string going on these Qatars and is also going to lose his stock to a whip as he's down to potentially his tournament stock here. If Bradish is able to close this game out, sitting on two stocks, needs to make it back on the center stage, but he's in such a good position to go ahead and move on further in bracket. Silent does not connect there, but he got one good punish off the neutral stick. Delay neutral air. This is where Java Science juggling his opponents in the sky, but no, Radish makes it back. He gets some damage himself too, and Java doesn't even want to switch over to the guitars. He's got that range in the bow. He's looking for those precision delights. The neutral stick does not hit, but the Silent does. Goes for the neutral stick read, and Radish dodges in. The nares are not coming through, but Java has yet to take too much damage himself, so he can keep this close. Delight pickup doesn't get the stare. Java trying to go for those creative weapon throw combos, and Java cannot seem to get enough damage on Raiders to take the stock. Raiders doing so well, but still not a lot of damage coming through here. Java's just impossible to touch. Oh my goodness, Java understanding what the assignment is, doing his absolute best to try to get an A on the paper, but finally, Radish Three, finds four. the openings, and these every single hit means it's that much closer to being the end of Java's career here at BCX 2022, but he's fighting his heart out, but a gravity cancel D-Sig from Radish is going to knock Java out of the tournament and give him a chance at getting a bigger chunk of money from this pot. Radish with an amazing read there with that gravity castle down to takes Java off the left side of the stage and wins three to two over Java to move forward here in BCX into the top eight and Luna will be his next opponent as we get further and on into the bracket. Oh man, that is absolutely wild. The amount of times that we've seen Radish go to these game five scenarios, but yet still managed to clutch up here. I I think he could potentially make it all the way, Taza. He very well could. And that's why it's like when we were talking about that game five coming on earlier on against Kaina, going all the way there, Radish has been doing so well in North America this year. I can't wait to see how he's going to be going up against Luna because we now know that Luna is no longer indestructible after that loss to Impala. But I got to hear what the analysts have to say about that game five set. Radish, the kid, the new kid on the block, raising eyebrows and turning heads. Zip, tell me about that set. <sighs> we got another one, man. We got it, Ajax. We said Radish was going to win, and Radish pulled through. Look at the damage on that orb, 547. That's the that's what it is, man. You can't stop this player if you cannot stop the con neutral control with the orb. Once he gets a touch, he hits you a couple more times, and he's always going to throw that little sprinkle of recovery at the end of it just to put himself in a safe position. If it hits you, cool. If not, he's going to fade away. So... He's played it so well.